Thank you, Tammy Sue Baker, yes. and welcome back to day two That's, for this yes. visit. Just Ooh, with right. us. Wow. Steve was just with us two weeks ago, oh, I think it was. So yeah. good. And Steve oh. is shaking people out of yeah. their core. I mean, the, the audience. And the young people, too. Yes. And today he's going to talk about UFOs Ooh. that young people are interested in. But this zombie thing is insane. Yes. But it's Another not situation. what we think. No. It's, wow. a, it's a, literally a, like, like a COVID thing almost, like a disease. We need to understand it. And what does the Bible have to say about UFOs, aliens, and all that is taking place? You want to know that? You right know on. why I'm a big fan is because he preaches Jesus. Amen. No matter Amen. what the subject matter, Me he points too. you back to Jesus, I the Holy that. Spirit, yes. and repentance. And that's yeah. what gravitates me. Just mm -hmm. like you, yeah. Dad. Because he's a now preacher. Now preacher that would not compromise the gospel. Amen. Where we no are one. now, where we are, the, the news, the minute up, right up to yeah. the minute. He, he just sent me a, this news so yesterday. Good. Newly uncovered documents show Pentagon's plan targeting conservatives. Absolutely. Can you believe this? Uh, wow. This is where we're living in a diabolical time mm -hmm. when good is evil and evil is good. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the fact that Steve is able to talk about this, most media will not talk about this, but understand Christianity, Christians are being targeted, not just in the military, but you at home, your church, your ministry. We began to see these attacks in 2020 when the ministry came under attack and they attacked everything. They attacked you personally. They attacked the ministry. They attacked the finances. That's what persecution looks like right now. And how do we respond to it? How do we stand and become a, a, a person of faith that will not compromise under this pressure? And guess what? You are a prime example of how to stand in this situation that Mom, we're do you realize, and you realize it because you've lived with me through it, I, I'm still standing is the name of my new books coming out July 4th on my anniversary, my yes. 60th anniversary yeah. of preaching the gospel. But I'm still standing, but they tried to kill me. Yes. They have tried to destroy me. They have gone to the governments. They've gone to the governments all over America to try to destroy us. They've gotten us taken off from a couple networks, but but we've survived and we actually built more. Yes. <laughs> that we came back stronger, <laughs> even though they were fighting us. But they almost killed me. Yeah. Mm. And I'm being serious about this. Yeah, I know. Because this is, what's, this is what this book is about. And it's the cancel culture. Yes. And this is what's going on. And you're going to have to have people that are going to tell you the truth. Yes, that's and right. And we're here. We do the office work right yes, here from the do. house. Yes, we do, yes. And uh, I love working with my daughter, my, yes. my son, and my, my adopted kids and all. And, I, I, you know, when God gave us all these kids, yeah. we had... We had through the period of time, we had, we had at least nine kids. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe more. Plus. <laughs> but when God gave us all these kids, but God takes care of us. And we've been doing the, the broadcast from here for a year now. Um, in, right here in the studio, in which, is, which, is, the house, which is my office. Your old office. The, the, today is the one-year anniversary of being yeah, here in my right. basement. Yeah. Yes, it sure is. In our house. I know. Happy anniversary. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Let's have a party, huh? Well, we I'm need, grateful. We I'm need so parties grateful. once in a while. Aren't you grateful that, God, that we had this technology yes. so that we could bring the best, the best, like Steve yeah. Quayle to you? Talk you talk about a cancel culture. We'd oh. be canceled if we weren't in this basement. Right. That's but this is Skyping. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we Skype all over the world, yes, Mondo. Yes, we do. We've Scotland been... and, you know, Missouri and, and Arkansas. <laughs> and, our, <laughs> and the guests, we have the guests Australia. online from all over the world. All yeah. over the world. We're going to have guests that we, we can bring in from England. We can bring in from Scotland. Yes. We can bring in from any place in the mm -hmm. world. Amen. And that's when we we move back to the studio. Right. Then we're going to put in big screens, God willing. I'm, I'm believing God for it. Pray for it. Yeah, we, we need some them. income to build those things we we just had two refrigerators go out at the ministry yeah. i mean the big ones at the girls home yeah. but i mean this is what the you you keep us going yeah so when you right. support Amen. when you send in a love gift that's you right. want to send something for Lori's house help yes. me buy a new refrigerator right. for the girls but they, yeah. need, they have to have it absolutely oh, oh my goodness would, we're talking but, about pregnant mamas yes. are yeah. you kidding me but so you're oh. standing with us people don't 
get discouraged. Don't yeah. give up. And Steve Quayle is a voice for America now. That's right. He's so important. You got to pray for Steve Quayle. Amen. They want him dead. You don't understand it. Anybody who preaches this is with strength and unveils things like he does, mm -hmm. they don't want him around. And uh, this is the kind of society that we're living in. He's an author. He's a speaker. He's a documentary filmmaker. He's a photographer. He uh, produces that True Legends conference attended by thousands every year. His newest documentary, The Cascadia, is a big seller. It's, it's, it's something that everybody should have. And if you don't have it, you need to get a copy of it yes. before it's gone. It, it is the big one. The big multiple ones. How many do you think there are, Mondo? Oh, my <laughs> Volcanoes. Lord. You, listen, just in there in Cascadia. in Cascadia, I think there's 18 and 11 of them you got to watch for. But we're watching a whole lineup. And through this movie, we are able to discover what we're up against and what the experts are saying. And how do we get prepared with food and water and be able to be Boy, active? That chart you just put on the screen. Look at that. That's that that that's near Los Angeles. Absolutely, all through the West Coast. But you got Mount Rainier. You got to watch for Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams, Mount Haven, Mount Hood. I mean, those are key volcanoes that the subduction zone when it becomes active. All those can go all at once. But listen, I love the 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 headline here. Yellowstone is just a distraction. Cascadia is the big one. When you watch this film, you're going to understand. Now, I got to say this. This is quality like never before that we've seen and presented to you. You know, experts are going to talk to you and they're going to show you inside of what's really happening at Cascadia. This may be the last day we'll be offering this Cascadia video. So be sure to order it today yes. if you don't have it. That's right. And it's it's so important that your family understand so that you know you you do you when you when you're aware mm -hmm. you don't have That's to fear. Right. Amen. Yeah. And you wake up and you say they say, oh the Cascadia hit. I mean that whole thing's gone. And and and, and you know what you'll say? Well the Jim Baker show told us yeah, this. Right. <laughs> you know, yes. it's in the Bible. Yeah. And and Steve Quayle has has a video. Yeah. And you have it in your home. Things change fast. Yeah, really. But it's happening so much now yes. that we must understand. And if you didn't get mm -hmm. the Cascadia video, right. Must have it. Yeah. Must mm -hmm. have it for your friend. Because this will keep you stable when the the earth the west coast is falling into the ocean mm -hmm. you must you must see it yes it's yeah. documentary yeah That's it's right. scientists yes. it's not preacher stuff it's scientists but it's in the bible it's right it's in the Bible. Lying and, straight and up that's what's word. important. Mm -hmm. So welcome back to our program today, Steve Quayle. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, Steve, Steve, great to have you back. We people are just responding to your visits at our show. They they love you. Yes. And uh, I have two people here, Mondo de la Vega <laughs> and uh, Kimberly Warwick, my producer. And they the these two Two of the most important people that produce the show. Yes. And listen, the sources that he puts out there yeah. are sources that are reliable, sources that are there telling us up to date on what's happening. Can I ask you, Steve, just before we get into the first question, can I ask you, what's your, what's your website? It's just Steve Quayle, S-T-E-V-E-Q-U-A-Y-L-E.com. It's my name, dot com. And it's spelled Q-U-A-Y-L-E. Com. And by the way, I tell people, I'm not Q Anonymous, I'm SteveQuayle.com. That's how I used to answer that when people say, are you Q Anonymous? I said, there's nothing anonymous about me. Thank you guys for having me on. I just appreciate it so much. Again, I want to take the statement that all this stuff is scary. It's not. The book of Revelation is scary to the unbeliever, but to the believer, it's the revelation Everybody since time immemorial has wanted to know what the future holds. God knew that, and Jesus spells it out for us so wonderfully. 
Now, I understand some of it's open to interpretation times and stuff, but you can't deny the global persecution that's coming upon and has been upon our brothers and sisters. America is now targeted because of our turning away from God for the same persecution that our brethren have gone through. Book of Revelation talks about those who are beheaded, beheaded for the testimony of Jesus. I had a gentleman in the military and in the former intelligence agency, he passed away, by the way, talk to me about all the guillotines that have been erected in the different FEMA camps and in the different military camps. Number, location, and Jim, it blew my mind, a quarter of a million of them. These people are serious. Now, look, I want to make it clear. I'm not in the CIA, nor would I ever be. I'm not in the NSA. I've never been in the military. I'm not a spy and every other uh, question, but I am one thing. I am a man dedicated to the calling that Jesus gave me face to face. That's not bragging. I am absolutely, uh, how do I say this, so guarded in what I say. I think I told you this, Mondo. I have to pray literally every time I go on a podcast, go on the Tom Horn, you, Jim, whoever, Doug Hagman especially, Doug is on the cutting edge. God bless him. And, and to tell the people what they can receive and in the context of the time, science fiction has prepared people for zombieism. And what's interesting, you guys, in Brazil right now, there's a new COVID variant and the word zombie was first, uh, you know, how do I say this? Here's what's not irony. I think it's a prophetic signal. Uh, a poet named Robert Southey, and it's just like Southey, and, and, and he wrote the word zombie in his History of Brazil in 1819. Now, that's pretty significant. And let me just explain to people what I have been concerned about for 20, this is my 26th year on, on, I guess you'd say, talk radio podcast. Obviously, I wasn't on podcast when it didn't exist, but I used to be all over the place on shortwave radio in those days, WWCR and other ones. But the word zombie is basically now being so, uh, as Mondo, you laid it out, we've got movies, Generation Z, we've got all of the TV series, and, and we've got now reports. We've got reports of different, and by the way, I want to make it clear, everything that they call CV-19 or its variants is not CV-19. Ebola is not CV-19. Ebola pox is not CV-19. But there are specific race biological weapons that people are developing. I'll tell you this, point blank. This will be shocking to some. You mean to tell me people can't put two and two together anymore and know that if the Wuhan virus, and it was a bioweapon, bottom line, no doubt in my mind, I knew some of the most famous bioweaponers or at least interviewed them. I didn't know them personally. I, you know, I could call them and say, hey, it's Steve, I do an interview. But people do not understand that the nasal swabs, and now they want to take our south end swabs, are genetic capture techniques. They want the genome of every American person who is taking the uh, uh, test, you know, for CV-19. And by the way, I want to make a, a statement about this. Kerry Mullis, one of the most brilliant scientists in the world, he's passed away now, 1993, Nobel, shared the Nobel Prize for chemistry. He was the one who invented PCR, polymerase chain reaction. And I, this is pretty interesting, Jim, because, you know, in times past, you've asked me about Yellowstone. That whole discovery was based on one bacteria in one of the Yellowstone National Park hot pools called the Mushroom Geyser Pool. And from that, genetic engineering of biological weapons was so accelerated that he made the statement that Fausti, and the, the Fauci guy, his statement is the most ignorant scientific man in the world, and he would say it to his face. Now, unfortunately, Kerry passed away a couple of years ago, but we were dealing with he and his family to get him on camera because we were dealing with the important find of Yellowstone. So what I'm saying to people is this. The technology, the techniques, uh, the ability, the capabilities, and now we're seeing it released. 
We're seeing it released, it being a specific race bioweapon targeting the people of Brazil. Some of the African dictators must listen to me, and, and I, I'm, that's not a good or bad thing, because they're talking about the same thing. There was a project, and it was called Project Coast, and it was during the days of South Africa, before the uh, you know end of apartheid and the, the whole Mandela thing and the turning back South Africa, et cetera. But in that, one of the most famous bioweaponeers in the world, Wutar Basan, and by the way, my film partner in my, my elephant movie, which is really a beautiful movie called The Heart of the Elephant, is, is a personal friend of his. So we started talking, and we started talking about the race-specific bioweapons that were developed. Now, all the nations of the world are doing this. We're seeing it done in every nation of the world, bioweapons being developed, race-specific, genotyped. And, and what's uh, uh, important, if you take any group of people, let's just take the Vikings, they're a haplo group. They're a genetically unique group, a haplo group. There are other genetically, especially, and I warn all of my black brothers and sisters that they have bioweapons and they are the people that are absolutely the most racist and really racist. When you have uh, a lady who thought she'd be president, and uh, you know she's uh, 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 the, if you will, the the worship queen for um, Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger. You know, I'm telling you, they they can target specific traits. For instance, the black community, sickle cell anemia. Now, I have black friends, black scientists. I have Mexican friends. As a matter of fact, when we get to the alien thing, I'll tell you the most amazing story. And all of my friends are Mexican nationals who are soon to announce to the world the greatest archaeological find concerning aliens and the Aztec civilization. But it goes back even before the Aztec. So we'll get there in a minute. But here's the deal. The CDC has a statement on their website called Zombie Preparedness, okay? And a zombie is literally a life form that has, how should I say this, animation. But if you see them, they're not all there. They'd be missing parts, but they have a taste for human flesh. Now, I want to ask you, how could cannibalism ever be embraced by the Western thinking Americans and then be told by one of the richest men in the world that you can't eat God made meat, you got to meet eat synthetic meat, okay? That same guy wants to dim the sun. Mike Adams, one of the speakers at our conference, said he wants to kill photosynthesis. You kill photosynthesis, you kill people. If you uh, dim the sunlight, you interrupt the krill in the ocean. The entire food chain is under attack. So getting back to the word zombie, that whole technology is being designed to do one thing, kill 7.4 billion people. The problem with Christians is they don't believe Jesus really said what he said, and then let alone meant what he said. Oh, Jesus is just talking metaphors. No, when Jesus spoke, it was parables. When those who could understand the simple things could see what he was saying. Well, those who are so religiously upright just missed the whole point. So we are now seeing, Jim, as you've said, we're seeing the judgment. That's a word that escapes 99% of Christians. Well, God is love. God wouldn't judge it. The Lord is angry with the wicked all the day long. People don't know the scripture. More importantly, people who claim to be Christians don't know their scripture. And if they quote it, they, uh, you know, don't believe it, in my opinion. So the problem is right now is we're being set up. Now, in the military, a zombie is anybody who is left after a cataclysm, and they're all in their deep underground military bunkers. Those are called dumbs, the secret underground bases too, dumbs. And that's a term of disparagement, it's derogatory. And basically that article you showed even underscores it because in essence, all the zombie movies, uh, when there is a military, then when the military ceases, then the people have to become the military. That's all pre-programming uh, the people of the planet, not just the United States, but especially the United States, to get ready for the zombie protocol. Because they can say, well, we told you. 
No, they didn't tell us, they programmed it. So this is why it's really important that people understand this whole situation about, again, the digital insertion of nanobot technology into the human body, any mutagenic nature, that means an ability to change your genome. If we really believe as Christians that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, and God said he's going to destroy those who destroy the temple, then where is the disconnect? And I'll tell you where the disconnect is. We do err as the people of God, not knowing the God we claim to know, not all of, I'm just saying the people that want a casual arm's length relationship, but they fail to embrace that you cannot serve a supernatural God in your natural mind, in your natural strength, in your natural understanding. This is why the gifts of the Holy Spirit need to be retaught. The baptism of the Holy Spirit needs to be, God has to come on what I call super Pentecost, and God's got to teach his people that you cannot stand against the evil in your own strength. And if people won't even embrace uh, a scientific intellectual argument against doing prohibited behavior of destroying your own temple, how do we keep them then from doing what I call religious side, okay? I, I think you know this. I like to invent words. Religious side is a religious expression of suicide by denial. And it's really important because one of the things that I, you know, I want to address here is my emails filling up with supernatural encounters by Christians of some of the most horrific things in people's nightmares. Years ago, almost 20 years ago on talk radio, I said the invisible things that people only used to dream of in nightmares or they used to portray on the cinema are coming into our dimensional reality. And that's going to contribute to the statement of Jesus Christ when he said, men's hearts failing them for looking after those things coming up on the earth. Well, we've got, we're in a squeeze. We've got things coming up on the earth from under the earth. And then we've got things coming down from the heavens. We've got fallen angels. We've got aliens. We've got transdimensional entities. We've got sightings now that are off of uh, the charts coming from the desert southwest, where I spend a lot of time because we're doing our, our fourth true legends down there as soon as they get over COVID. But the point being is that when I speak to, let's just say there's a broad section of people, these are from law enforcement, these are from uh, uh, military. I have a, a, a friend that was in Iraq who sent me the account of actually coming into an entire camp of zombies, okay? He said, Steve, they were dragging one leg in the movie. One of them only had half a body. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, freak people out. But there are diseases that are designed to initiate cannibalism in human beings. Starting on talk radio, 26 years ago, one of the statements I made, and it seems so strange even to make it, is when I made the statement that when you see the major volcanoes of the day going off around the world in synchronous eruption and, and cannibalism fills the headlines of the newspapers of the day, know that tribulations, plural, are underway. People can argue about the great tribulation. They can argue about this. Jesus said, in this life, in this world, we're going to have tribulations, plural. I believe, Jim, that people have put off into such a distorted time frame that none of this could be happening because, gee, how can this be happening? We should be out of here by now. So the CDC... The U.S. military preparing the American people and all of their, if you will, followers and supporters that the days of the zombie apocalypse are upon us. And that's really, really important. It's just like, uh, you know, woe unto you in the inhabitants of the earth. The book of Revelation talks about the angel, uh, forgive me, the chair of Satan and also the, uh, if you will, the fallen angels visibly appearing on earth in the last days. The Bible says the angels, fallen angels, can become ministers of light. So the bottom, bottom line is this. We are in a supernatural battle for our very existence. It is beyond the political realm to solve a spiritual problem. Kimberly, I think, knows that statement. I've used it for however long she's been listening to me. 
But there is no political solution to a spiritual problem. Yet what did most Christians do? They looked to a political solution for a spiritual problem called sin, S-I-N. I knew when a lot of the, quote, prophets were prophesying that not one of them was mentioning repentance. Not one of them was renting, mentioning calling out to God to grant a spirit of repentance. And, and it was all basically man-centered. And I got to tell you something, uh, I don't have any room, and I'm not a prophet, never claimed to be. Some people say that. I never have said that. I want everybody to know this. In 26 years, I am simply a man tasked by the living God with a Joseph's ministry and, and, and tasked with warning the people of God. How do I know so many people around the world? It couldn't even be, it couldn't even be explained in logic, except it was God's fulfillment. Steve, if you will warn the people of, 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 of my people, actually, you said, if you'll warn my body, I'll bring people that know what's going on to tell you. The people can tell you the what. The what can't tell you the who. It's just like that information I shared uh, yesterday on the show about what's going on in Russia, what's going on in Israel. People are not getting the truth because, uh, and here's the reason. Somebody says, well, why won't the press, why won't, any of the, well, why won't anybody tell you the truth? And real simple, bottom line, they want you dead. They want me dead. And you, Jim, have uh, experienced that. And isn't it great that the blood of Jesus is greater than all of our, quote, brethren's curses? I've never, never had a problem with the world like I have with religious people claiming to be Christians, but never even having read Matthew 18. And so now we're in a period where the young Christians, and this is important, parents, the kids know about aliens. The kids are seeing the flying saucers on YouTube. The kids have legitimate questions. But more important, the Bible has answers. And if we don't give them answers, they're going to get sucked into the world of the occult. They're going to be basically abandoning the faith of their uh, fathers and mothers. And that's why we have to teach the truth about the aliens the fallen angels and the demons, because it's biblical. You asked me a question when we took a break. Fallen angels can use the same type of technology that mankind is making now to make synthetic beings. It's my contention that all the different species of, of uh, aliens have been the creation of a prior fallen angelic technology that's being distributed to the human race. Now here, let me make a difference for most people. A fallen angel is not a demon. The word demon in Greek is disembodied spirit. When a fallen angel had sex with an earth woman and produced a giant, for instance, uh, Goliath had an earthly mother. But the point is when Goliath died, that hybrid evil spirit became a demon. That's what the book of Enoch teaches in the book of giants, the Dead Sea Scrolls. So. People in, in Christianity won't even accept that. They'll use the quote of Jesus. Well, Jesus said in heaven, they're neither given or taken, neither given or taken in marriage, but are as the angels in heaven. That's in heaven. They came to earth. That's what Judah's talking about. The angels that kept not their first estate. They inserted themselves into the seed of, of women to corrupt the genetic line of Adam and Eve. And that's why it says that Noah and his family, the very few, were saved in the flood because they were the only pure genetic stock. They were not corrupted in their generations. The amount of genetic manipulation, they're making monsters. And I, I wish I could explain this in a way that it wouldn't flip a bunch of people out. The truth is, if you have a supernatural intelligence with a supernatural technology, and mankind can do what they're doing in an evil, just multiply that by literally levels beyond your, my, or our understanding. Yet Jesus says to the Christian, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, both, by the way, in the book of Revelation, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But that's not a general, how should I say this, that, that is a blessing and a promise, but it still has to be embraced by faith and practice. It's, you've got to know, you've got to be persuaded that Jesus is who he said he is, and God will help you. You know, David, King David said, at the times I am afraid, I trust in thee. 
I, I quote all, I, somebody, I think I told what your producer off the off air, I've got four lion pictures behind me, even added a new one. And the reason I do that, I want, every time I come in to sit at my desk to do the podcast, I want the scripture, the righteous are as bold as lions, because Jesus is coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He came as the lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world the first time. And the scripture says, can a lion not when a lion roars, cannot be heard? Yet where is the word? Where is the exaltation, the, ex the exalting the king of kings? And the idea of staying masked in your own home, the idea of wearing a mask in your own home, whatever happened to, you know, the image and likeness of God? I tell people, four things convince me God is who he said he was. A smile, a hug, a kiss, and a tear. The, I wrote a book about tears called an ocean of emotion and people don't understand your tears just your tears are as the most sophisticated data storage device that it's beyond what mankind can do and every emotion every sight every sound every smell every hug every hurt is stored emotionally in your tears and that's why the righteous tears are stored up before the Lord of hosts, because listen to this, Jesus died for all men everywhere at all times, and every single one of our tears, he wipes them away because his blood has covered our sins. But in hell, there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, and their worm dieth not. I know my audience are having a hard time with zombies. And and uh, Mondo, I guess, believes in zombies. Do you believe in zombies? Absolutely. <laughs> Kimberly, do you believe in zombies? But I see... I. I grew up that zombies were something out of motion pictures. Thinking but about. here's what he's saying, I believe, and I want to make sure. Mm -hmm. Is zombie, zombieism is really a disease. It, that's right. Exactly. Is, is that right, Steve? Zombies that are on the earth are a disease like any other disease that affects people and they become like zombies. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Forgive me, but that's only part of the story. Zombies uh, zombies also have the evil spiritual entity known as demon possession, okay? Because there is no rationale with a zombie. Uh, uh, the best way to explain zombies' bloodlust is this, the appetite of demons expressed through humans. It should be astonishing to people that the richest people in the world, not all of them, but some of them, are into occult ceremonies where they have to drink, you know, blood that's, that's extracted from a tortured child. Now, that's sick, but that's the appetite of demons expressed through humans. The ancient world dealt with monsters, mythological and real. And this is something that is really important to get through. The disease will basically destroy the human defenses, God gave us defenses as humans to resist the devil and he will flee. But when you're inviting, or what's the word I want? Embracing abject demon possession, giving yourself over to be inhabitant, be inhabited by the demons who then become your inhabitants, it's a twofold. What I'm saying, Jim, is they can induce zombieism, at least the appetite for human flesh. But at the, at the end of the thing, it's both hands, right hand and left hand. And the left hand simply is the evil spiritual possession of that zombie. So the, the zombie protocol, and then I think people should say, okay, if this is all wild stuff, why does the military have a manual about it when it happens? Why does the CDC even have anything on their, on their members? Center for Disease Control or Creation, I call it that. That's my opinion. The whole subject of zombies could be just boiled down at one end to a genetically modified human that is no longer human on the level that you and I or a living being is. Then that corpse, that walking and, and animated, there's a better word, it's not living. An animated corpse is possessed by a demonic entity. That demonic entity has knowledge, it has sentience, it has 
how do I say this, a purpose to do nothing else but to destroy. And I think that's the easiest way I can explain it. What about what we've heard about in the last few years, this spirit cooking yeah, and sure. these these famous left wing, especially they have these big dinner parties and they eat crazy things. I, I would even hate to talk about it because it's so so weird. It's an absolute occult ritual. Spirit cooking means you're providing the sustenance for evil spirits. The lady, the f famous one, you know, I won't even call out her name, but you always see the goat's head, a bloody goat skull, you know, and by the way, that's used in Santeria, it's used in voodoo, it's used in a lot of different manifestations of the cult. But even a very famous politico had a picture in his house of two men sitting over a cadaver eating it. And if I might segue, and, and with your permission, Jim, this has everything to do with the alien phenomenon of abduction, sexual, uh, uh, what would you call it, experimentation of both men and women. The phenomenon is real, but it goes back ancient times. The evil that's going to be present on the earth is off the charts. If we can't even, and I'll be blunt, if you can't grasp the fact that Hollywood's preparing you for zombieism, I won't tell you which, and, and please, I don't want anybody to go searching, but two of the most famous, the most wealthy pop singers, both have a, who have acknowledged they're serving Satan, okay, two of them have talked about the taste of human flesh. Mind of man, I forget who it was, but an angel appeared to uh, one of the uh, a very you know famous evangelists, and I forgive me, I just can't recall it right now, and said, the mind of man cannot even embrace the evil that's going to be unleashed on the earth. Pray, tell God's people to draw close to Him. He will protect. He will keep them from the evil. But tell, and he said, tell my people, may have, I don't know, Jesus or, you know, one of the archangels, but tell God's people, my people, meaning the angel, to keep their eyes on me. Because as long as their eyes are on me, they will be safe. Well, I got to tell you something. If that isn't a wonderful promise, and, and look, look at everything that's happening and people just couldn't believe. Could you ever believe that it would be illegal in the United States? to hug your wife. I actually saw two crazy people trying to kiss each other, and they obviously were lovers. I mean, real, one of them had a wedding ring on it, it was a, a, a guy and a girl, and they were trying to kiss each other through their masks, okay? It defies insanity. And the, the other thing I wanna share something is this, is one of the statements that is critical people understand the two witnesses that are going to come upon the earth that the book of Revelation speaks specifically concerning, that will have all the power of heaven's most prolific prophets. I personally believe it's Enoch and Elijah. There are some who believe it's Moses and Enoch, Moses and Elijah. But the reason I say Enoch and Elijah is because of the only two men in history that have never died. Enoch walked with God and was not, he was taken. Elijah, swing low, sweet chariot. How would you like to go that way, Jim? I've even put in my uh, request that way. But, but I'm, you know, I mean, it's very cool. The point being is, is that Enoch and Elijah are the two witnesses. Now we, we are seeing the false prophet, in my opinion, already arising. The, the statements coming from the head of Roman church right now are so anti-Bible, one world government, one world religion, one world uh, uh, currency. So government, religion, and currency. And the contempt that he has for Jesus Christ, but the embrace for everything else is off the charts. So we're gonna have two, we're gonna have two sets, if you will, uh, two dualities. We're gonna have the antichrist and the false prophet. Well, I believe false prophets here just preparing the way, and we're going to have the two witnesses. 
The two witnesses appear, as I understand Scripture, concurrently with, concurrently with the Antichrist being revealed. If you look at it, they can't be killed for the 42 months of their ministry. By the way, that's three and a half years, not seven. But the point being is that God is going to give a supernatural anointing to both, and Enoch and Elijah, those are the two guys that are coming, are basically the two witnesses. They've seen everything in heaven. They're charged with God to smite the earth with whatever plagues they choose, just as Moses did with Israel um, when they were in Egypt. Actually, Moses did with Egypt when the, the Hebrews were in Israel. But the point being is it will take a supernatural witness, power, and miracle-working duo to offset the lying signs and wonders of the Antichrist and the false prophet. Does that make sense? Wow. Well, many people that are friends of this program, such as Tom Horn, have talked for many years about UFOs and aliens and a great deception. Can you explain for us why this subject is important for Christians? Well, first of all, we're going to, we're going to be subjected, the end of the age Christians are going to be subjected to lying signs and wonders like no other age in history. People are going to be told, and already Hollywood has uh, prepared people that the aliens are created. The most popular TV show on the, you know, the documentary films, history show and, and discovery is Ancient Aliens. And the reason why that's more popular, look, when we were, I went with Peru. We took a group of people to Peru a couple of years ago. They had heard about the aliens. They believed that some of their holy sites or unholy sites, like Machu Picchu and, uh, you know, the, the Ojante Tambo, these are real places. And forgive me, you guys, for killing the, the Spanish pronunciation, or Sacsayhuaman, you know, all these, they had heard of the ancient aliens. But so many of them had never heard of the risen and resurrected Jesus Christ. So when we're talking about fallen angels, you can understand, whoa, that's a big topic for these people. But when they understood their history of giants and who did it, they believed the star people created them. And so that's what's called the Prometheus, the Prometheus, okay, proposition that there is no God. There is no heaven, there is no hell. But the bottom line is, is that the alien deception, they will come at a time when the earth is in its most dire peril. Now, this is why I believe World War III is unfolding in the Middle East and in Ukraine. They need a false world war, goes nuclear. I don't know how many hundreds of millions of people or tens of millions of people will be dead, but that sets the stage for the Antichrist that sets the stage for the alien saviors to come. And anybody who's ever seen the, the, the old fiction movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still, the original version with Michael Rennie and you know the, the, the remake with Keanu Reeves, bottom line is imagine somebody coming in that form saying, we are your saviors, we created you, and then presenting a false DVD or a false crystal projection of all of history and people will say, these be the gods. The point is, is that when God's people reject the living water, they cut themselves off. So what Tom and I and others who are writing about this are trying to warn, the deception is in their mind to destroy the last vestiges of belief in Christianity by substituting not in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, or that God created Adam in his image and Eve out of Adam's rib, also in his image, but that that's all myth, that's all legend. And those of us who are Christians that are standing against us, we're standing against the gods that created us. In other words, we become intergalactic heretics, okay? And in that process, there will be a announcement very soon. I know that people are going to make it. And they're going to show irrefutable irrefutable proof of the alien presence, flying saucers, the whole nine yards, 
the uh, alien languages. Any of you who are familiar with the crash flying saucers and stuff? And it's, how should I say this? It's beyond repute. The provenance, that's a fancy word when you dig up alien artifacts or uncover them. That means that you've documented where it was, how it was taken out of the ground, how it was cared for, and they're, they're doing that right now. And, and one of the things I think we talked about off break is based on just what they found today. By the way, this is an expedition that I've funded and founded, and it's been ongoing for two years. And now the fruit of that is going to be made public. And at the point it's made public, there are 27 variations of alien species that I believe were created by the fallen angels using genetic techniques that we don't even know exist. And that's the source of aliens. And when people say this and they say, well, uh, God could be an alien, I said, no, he isn't. And when they say the aliens created us, I said, then who created them? See, here, here's the problem, is that the deception is going to be so great, except people of God, the people of God, have the discernment of the Holy Spirit, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, the discerning of spirits, what you see with your eyes and what you hear with your ears, you're going to say, God, and what I'm seeing right now, is what I'm seeing real? Is what I'm hearing real? Or is it basically a neural transmission to my brain, circumventing my ear, planting thoughts in my mind. That's why there's so many people in the United States who genuinely are mind-controlled people that want people to believe them. And they, they really are, you guys. The, um, the other thing that is really critical for people to understand is this, that if you create a problem and you provide the solution, People think, those are our gods. That's how come the fallen angels were worshipped as gods throughout the world. That's why the gods, the fallen angels, were always a bigger, larger-than-life size. So the great deception will be that the aliens created us, that the gods of Christian, the god, the god that the Christians believe in, not gods, the god, is all just make-up stuff. Jesus they, and and so I've been told this, I, I can't prove it, I've been told it, that a certain group in the intelligence community called the aviary, that's what they're called, has supposedly, supposedly the equivalent of stones that project video and supposedly have pictures of flying saucers around the resurrection. Well, we know that to be not true. But what about the people that have already accepted the lie that the aliens created us? So, Jim, the bottom line is, is they're going to, how should I say this, present them as our saviors. And what they are is basically guests for dinner and we're on the menu. <clears throat> for the record, the U.S. military is now accelerating. And here's a good point, really important point. The military is accelerating the release of documents that were formerly classified above top secret. You had to have a majestic level clearance. That's something that you'd have to, you know, I don't have time to explain it. But what it really means is this, is that they want to get ahead on the narrative so they can spin the narrative. I really believe that Tom Horn, that other people that are dealing with the whole alien, fallen angel, demon, and, and quite candidly, Tom and I have been doing, I think, the longest time together for over 20 years to prepare the people of God that they be not deceived, because that was a commandment of Jesus, be ye not deceived. So the nature of the deception will be point blank. God didn't create us. God's a fantasy. This is what they say. And the aliens created us. Hmm. And so the aliens bring a solution to the problem they generate and then out steps the Antichrist on the world stage. God's not even gonna allow just that deception to go. He's gonna have his two witnesses, two witnesses telling everybody, this is the Antichrist. Wow. wow. Powerful. We're out of time for today's oh, show. Powerful and teaching. I have a friend from 40 years ago, probably. Oh, yeah. Dr. Dave Lewis, mm -hmm. who was a 
prophetic expert in yeah. his day. He was he was the forerunner of the great prophetic teachers today. Yeah. And he has written a book, and I'm going to get a hold of the book. Yes. And they're my friends. There it is, Dr. Ava, David Lewis. Yeah. UFO. He called it end time delusion. What? Why does NASA spend millions on giant antennas trying to contact? Uh, he said, "Who are the deceivers?" Uh, and it talks about the gov the government at that time, and are we being observed by? other civilizations or are these demonic counterfeits there is de demon forces and there's fallen yes. angels mm -hmm. and there's so much supernatural yes yeah. that's right and we don't we're not to be deceived right. by these things but we're, we're going to have to have steve back we need you to order his video if you haven't yeah. this is your last time to get it on our show so if you want it the cascadia is the big one this is so powerful, so important. It really and, is. And uh, you can get that for $35, or you can get the three group for a gift of $100, or you can get the um, Baker's, yes, Dozen. The Baker's, Baker's Dozen, Dozen, which is 13 of the documentaries for a donation of $350 to the ministry. All right. Lori, you have something to say? Well, you know, I just want to say to everybody that if you haven't, you know, gotten gotten involved with us with the Hall of Prophets Ground Break or what we call Gold Member, it would be this is the time to get involved because this is how we can keep bringing great people, great men and women of God like Steve Quayle who come on the show and tell us the truth, and um, you could be you could become that for a gift to the ministry of $1,000, and you'll receive two PTL mugs and blankets and all that. But most importantly is that you're standing with this ministry yeah. now with our credit card situation back in That's it going. Right. Everybody, yes. listen, you could do this. You could do the $81 a month with a 13, a month with 13 month commitment, and you could send in, in your credit, on your credit card, your $81 a month for the Hall of the Prophets ground breaker. Well, you can breaker. do the whole thousand on a credit card. Oh, sure, absolutely, of course. And but I, I but however it works out for you, yeah. I just feel what, as I've budget? been listening to Steve, I've been thinking how how grateful I am that that I I chose to become you know a member and be a part of this to bring great men and women of God like Steve Quill. And Steve, I want to just say this. I want to say quickly to you, thank you for living out. Joshua 1 9. I want to say that to you too, Jim Baker. Have I not commanded you, the Lord says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or, dismay or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And the thing that I love about you, honey, and the thing I love about Steve is um, that you're strong and you're courageous, yet you have the most tender hearts towards the things of God, and you're always pointing towards Jesus. So thank you, honey. Thank you, Steve. It's really and you know powerful. you're talking about that Hall of the Prophets. Mm -hmm. I want to put it on the screen so you can see it. And we're going to have Steve Quayle, God willing, do conferences here in this big yes. new hall. And this is a place that's going to broadcast around the world, the prophets. Yeah. And we'll be able to have the, the seminars, the workshops, the, everything you talk about, the, yeah. the great preachers of the world will come here every day. Yeah. This is being built for the future. The ground has been broken. We're getting ready to lay the foundations and we need support. Yeah. And that thousand dollars, you'll be a part of sowing into the kingdom of God. Yes. And so you right. give that thousand dollars, it'll mean a lot to this building. Yeah. And it means that we can do it. And we can yeah. only do it as God's Amen. people. And if when God's through with us all, he's going to say Ip Ichabod over some of us. Yeah. But I want to have him say, well done. Amen. And that's what you need to do is Amen. be faithful to him. Amen. Do things that will bless the Lord and the kingdom of God. Yes. Right. We want to thank Steve Quayle for being with yes, us today. Did right. I miss anything? Yeah, one thing I want to remind you from yesterday, if you have not already gone to the website, 
Sign up for the virtual conference online. This was just on the tip of the iceberg of the topics that are going to be discussed during June the 11th and the 12th at the Extinction Protocols Conference that is a virtual online. You'll be able to sign up and they're also providing a promo code JBS5 where you'll receive a discount for your attendance virtually. So you can watch this wherever you are. You can have your friends and your family also join with you you, but make sure you take advantage of this offer that he has created specifically for the Jim Baker show. And we want to thank you for that, Steve. And we're so excited because these are the topics that many of you have been asking. You're wanting to know what what's coming next. Where are we at in the book of Revelation? Well, this conference is going to be an amazing time. So make sure you go and you sign up, get your place, sign up right now. And you can go to stevequell.com and all the information it's right there on the front page. For and, you know, when I've studied the word, Marcella, because it says globalist yeah. to initiate tribulations. Right. We are in the days of tribulation. Yes, we They're are. They're coming fast. We're living in that time. Sure then, then Jesus comes back, yes. according to the Bible, after the tribulation. Yes. People keep thinking we're going to get out. But I'll tell you what, I've studied it in depth. If you don't believe me, Get my revelation yeah, teaching. That's right. Study the revelation for yourself. Yes. After means after. after. Mm -hmm. And so right. it's time to leave for today. Yes. But we do want to thank Steve Quell for being with us today. I wish our time wasn't all gone I because know. I got so much more I want so to good. ask about. Mm -hmm. But we'll have to have Steve back to ask him about more things that are happening and Oh, he's got so many things like the, the, the greatest cover-up in history of aliens. Oh, boy. And, and things like that that yes. we'll talk about maybe on our next show with yes. Steve. Yes. So remember that God loves you. What's our phone number? Toll-free, Lori, would you have calls? Yes, call us at 1-888-988-1588 or go to the website and you can jimbakershow.com and you can see all the different products available for you to help support the ministry and help yourself. God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Call bye me bye. now, please. We love you. Thank you, Steve.